It's finished, Pete will argue against religion being taught in public schools across the nation. A case called Everson versus the Board of Education in 1947 uh, found that that the uh, Establishment Clause, which basically is what we're talking about here in the First Amendment, that Congress cannot um, set up any kind of uh, religious um, establishment. Um, so the Establishment Clause they said would apply to to the, all states, not just uh, uh, the state that was filing suit. Voluntary prayer is perfectly legal. And, and nobody, I don't think anybody's making a case against voluntary prayer. You mentioned quiet time. Uh, that's terrific. You know, have, have time where people can reflect in any way. A family, parents and the students have the right to send their students to that school and learn religion and and if that's part of if they, that's an important part of their value system, then great. The problem with with having formal prayer in the public school is you're now you're taking a value and you're you're basically teaching that value to the exclusion of other values. Guys, Pete Papcock is gonna argue and make a case for the eight consecutive Boston Celtics championships from nineteen fifty nine to nineteen sixty six as the most improbable record to ever be broken in sports. Individual records uh, are the result of extraordinary skill and talent, uh, unmatched work ethic and drive, uh, amazing competitive spirit, uh, dedicated dedication that's above and beyond what most others would do. Difference now with the team sport becomes much more complicated because now you've got to take all those individual traits and you have to mold them into a, a puzzle where everything fits. So you take that, you take that drive, you take that competitiveness, you take those talents, and you have to mold them into an effective working unit, uh, which is is much more complicated than the individual. So when you when when a team is able to win a championship, it, it's such a remarkable achievement because you've blended all those all those diverse personalities and egos right. together you know there is no quid pro quo you don't plant a seed sit down indian side say okay seed grow come on seed grow man this seed don't work i quit how many people we know like that took a real estate course thought they was going to be rich and not rich but it's like i don't even plant a seed unless i prepared for it and then I leave that seed alone because I don't expect nothing of that seed. I planted the seed, whoop, there it is, 30 years ago, and now it's a sequoia. And I use that same process in everything I do, and I continue to educate myself, and I try to tell, shout it from the mountains. It's, the, it's a great line. It was so iconic, except it doesn't mean anything. It kind of does, though. But he wasn't more powerful than you'll ever know. Yeah, but he was a force ghost. So he yeah, could but still he didn't guide. do anything as a force goes. He still, he still he could guide Luke. No, but he, he, guided still, he, Luke, he guided Luke to destroy the Death Star and save the universe. No, it was Yoda. It was Yoda's work on him that guided God, him. This, to, this to, was before Yoda. This was the first Star Wars. If Obi Yoda. Wan Kenobi is not a force ghost, he is not telling Luke use the force. Some of the judges' comments sting. Some of the comments sting. Some of what you guys have said stings. <laughs> right. And it's easy to feel some type of way about that. But the way I approach everything is, what if what he was saying is right? What would you do about it? How beautiful your garden is depends on um, how beautiful you treat it, and how beautiful you love it, and how beautiful you take care of it. And I think that that has very much to do with the, uh, us on a personal level, whether it's dealing with addictions or whether it's dealing with, um, you know, emotional issues or whatever it might be. Do you want just a little herb garden or do you want like one of those really big, beautiful gardens with stalks of corn and, and every kind of pepper on the planet like my brother has, my, my twin brother Jeremy, is how important that that you cultivate that garden always there's so many different levels to the onion of the shining of of what's going on is it is the entire place haunted is it this thing that's going to happen to literally anybody that that takes care of the place over the winter the song dazed and confused if you if you just close your eyes and when that kicks in creating magic and then and, and in my opinion you know the greatest rock and roll 
perfect rock and roll voice uh, was, was, you know, was Robert. And I just, I think that, you know, and his voice is great now. The stuff that he's doing now, he's just getting older, it's really cool. But when he had that sort of high pitch, um, that, that thing that he had, that sort of beautiful whine that he had to his voice. And...